inside this box rests a biblically accurate firebird. That's right, we've got another one from the Gibson Mod Collection. If you're not familiar with them, we do a recap every week on Sunday. And if there's one that's particularly interesting, I buy it to review and document. This one, I don't know, I might have to end up keeping it. Well, one thing's for sure, this is a giant case. Like, geez, that's twice as beefy as it normally is. That tells you there's a firebird in this case. Let's go ahead and see this beast. I saw a comment when we recapped this that this was a biblically accurate guitar. And I just had to laugh because when you're taught like Bible stories, at least I was taught angels look like this, but biblically accurate angels look like these freaky eye monster beasts. <laughs> so we've got a Firebird one here that has been given a whole bunch of eyes and like other freaky things. What a perfect Halloween -y guitar. But before we get too far in the lore and history of this thing, let's just get our first impressions. The body is really lightweight on this thing, but yet the neck feels like it's going to be a little bit heavier, but I think that comes down to like the tuners and just the way the Firebird is designed in general. But you're going to notice that these crazy little eyes here, they're not just on the front of the guitar, and that's what really made me want to purchase this thing. I mean, look at the headstock. And I especially love the one right here between these tuners. It's just so, so creepy, but friendly at the same time. It's like, I'm a hideous monster, but I want to be your friend. And I think that's why I ultimately really like this piece, because it's spooky without being too scary. But check this out. The entire back was also hand painted, and this is a full on gloss finish. What a cool piece. Demo shop mod guys, pat yourself on the back for this one. The only thing that could have made it cooler is if we had Big Red's fretboard that we saw in this episode. So yeah, this thing's pretty spooky, but it looks like we've also modified our pickup. We'll check that out a little bit more on the workbench. But this is also a true neck through Firebird, so let's learn a little bit about those. Firebirds were first introduced in the 60s. There's the 1, 3, 5, the 7. If you're wondering where the numbers in between went, that's because they belong to the Thunderbird bases. But then halfway through the decade, they switched them to the non-reverse style, and then that just birthed the different styles of Firebirds. The 70s ones saw the Bicentennials, which are kind of like a blending of a 1 and a 5 with a little bit of 3 specs. But then when the Firebird first really, really gets reintroduced in a proper way is in 1990, and that's when you can find all the nice custom colors that I like to review, document, and collect that we've seen on the show. However, getting a Gibson USA Firebird in general is kind of hard to do right now. But in 2019, AMS did an exclusive run of these things. Now, I think a few other dealers might have got them as well, but they look like this. They were just pretty basic, but they came in frost blue, silver mist, and a vintage sunburst finish. Now, they were $2,000 brand new, which is kind of expensive for a one pickup guitar, but I think they were blown out as low as $1,500, if I remember correctly. But nowadays, the used market, since you can't really get a brand new Firebird 1 anymore, outside of custom shop, custom order, which is crazily expensive, they're all the way up to like $2,700 used. I know Lonnie over at Cream Tone, he likes to modify these particular guitars with his cool pick guards and whatnot, and he's able to get some nice premiums on those as well. But there's not a doubt in my mind that this started as a 2019 Firebird one from that particular run. So the fact that you can get one of those in a special custom finish just made this a no brainer to purchase and document. Now, can I prove that by showing you the serial number? Not exactly because it got covered over. But if you get it in the light just right, you can actually see like two dings right here. But that's actually part of the Made in USA stamp. And then the original serial number, you just can't quite make it out. So they gave it the new demo shop number 16 serial which seems to be what they do for their really special examples nowadays. And the other reason why I had to get this is because it kind of makes a nice partner to last year's Halloween special. If you missed the episode, check it out here. It's a, a Squire Stratocaster that was made over and dressed up as a Fender, but as a, a zombie at the same time. I don't know, generally I don't like creepy things with eyes, but something about these designs, they just work. As far as case candy on this bad boy, we've got a warranty evaluation as these always come with. Yeah, just in case you don't know, anything you buy out of the demo shop and mod shop actually has a two-year playability warranty. Now, it's not going to cover cosmetic things, but like if the neck is like warped or for some reason, you're still covered for up to two years. And I think they do that because a lot of these are like new old stock guitars. They might not catch everything that was wrong with them or it just might develop an issue. So they've got you covered there. But it looks like typical COA stuff. Nothing too fancy in the case candy department. So let's go ahead and get this crazy beast on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs.
inside the eye bird. Let's go ahead and check this out. I waited to pull the pick guard off because I just know they had to have hid something under there. That's just what the mod guys do. What is under here? Ah, just some more eyes. That's really lame. They should have did like a super scary thing under here. But at least they did take the time to do everything, even if they knew it was going to get covered by a pick guard. But I suppose at the same time, you could just take it off. This finish is so crazy. You're never going to notice little small screw holes. Maybe that's also why they did it. But from far away, it almost looks like an EVH striped guitar. <laughs> that's silly. Let's go ahead and check out our pickup. I mean, we've got quite the beefy surround on this thing. I don't think I've seen that before. But the backside reads Lead Firebird 111318. So this is one of the earlier versions of this guitar. And it doesn't look like we have any other markings in the body. The only other thing of note is it looks like we have a ground wire running from here into there. And it's just master volume, master tone, no push pulls or anything fancy like that. As far as the reading, it doesn't really make much sense to me, but it is a very hot pickup. But let's just take a second to appreciate all of this. I mean, this was hand painted. So I would imagine the big black stripes came first and then they're like, what if we throw a whole bunch of eyes and teeth on it? How about that? <laughs> but there's some really interesting ones here. I really like this guy. He's got two eyes and then that's like his mouth. Here's another friendly little guy. This one reminds me of a little spider. And here we've got like a piranha plant. This guy looks really suspicious. He looks like he's trying to take a bite out of crime. Look at that, we even have a smiley guy here. But I think I finally figured out why I like this thing so much. It reminds me of what I based my nickname off of. You can check out this episode if you want the full story. But Johan Miro's head of a woman, kind of a weird painting that they made us recreate, I think in what, eighth grade? The eye on this painting is kind of similar to the eyes that's on here. And you've got a lot of black lines and like vines going on here, so it kind of gives you similar vibes. But if you're curious where Trogli came from, it's this little friendly hand right here. I thought he looked like a dragon. Trogdor was popular at the time and I like friendly things, so I took the trog and added an ly and that's how my nickname ended up coming about so i think in tribute of that if i keep this thing i think i should get a custom pick guard made that has this freaky crow on it instead of the firebird oh what a freaky piece but it does indeed have mahogany wings it's the nine ply mahogany walnut construction for the neck through you just can't see it anymore the only thing that would have made this better is if it had an ebony fretboard and they gave it block inlays but that's a little bit of a tall order for the mod collection they usually don't rip fretboards off so we just got the regular pearloid dot inlays here 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length 12 inch fretboard radius with neck specs of 1.72 inches at the nut, a very wide 2.1 by the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.87, and by the 12th, beefs up to 0.92, but I mean, that's not that beefy. It's definitely a slim C-shaped neck profile. However, I do want to mention this is nice and rounded up here. It's not quite uncomfortable. Like sometimes really wide SG necks will feel like up here. It definitely does that whole almost D-shaped neck thing. Just a little bit more of a slope shoulder. But this is very comfortable without being too large in the cording area. Here's that neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. Just your typical thin wide style firebird neck. This headstock is just a masterpiece though. It's awesome. However, I'm kind of sad when you remove the truss rod cover, our kind of spooky but yet friendly guy becomes very scary. But then there's a little hidden one here that's like, ah, I like it. It's like a mummy. And this guy's looking really scared. Like what is going on here? And he's grouchy. There's just so much character in every eye. I mean, that's what made me initially fall in love with this thing. This eye doesn't have too much expression at all. And that's easily what this firebird could have became. Just a whole bunch of mindless staring eyes. But it was this eye right here, the little sleepy guy that made me fall in love with this Stratocaster. And that's just similar stuff that we've got going on here. Even that guy's looking a little bit cheeky. But anyways, something else you might not have noticed is this guitar mixes chrome with black hardware. So we've got the black nut with the chrome washer and the chrome tuner body. We've got the black ring with the chrome pickup. Then I forgot to show you this earlier. It's got an interesting wrap tail piece that actually uses a hex key for your adjustment, which is the first time I've seen that. So you can wiggle that back and forth to get the best intonation possible. But then that has the chrome studs. So there's a red, black, white, and a black and chrome design going on with this one. Moving on to the back side here. Once again, I'll just scroll through. You can pick out your favorite ones. I think that one's got a good expression. Right here looks like an alien face. 
Oh, I like this. Look at that. It's like a really big face. So like those are his two eyes and that's his mouth. That's a good one. This looks like a human head that just happens to have a third eye. Now we'll move on to the electronics cavity. Doesn't look like they're really changing anything. Two Gibson brand pots with an orange drop cap and a Switchcraft output jack. You've got black strap buttons at the bottom and at the center of the neck. Then we can also appreciate the time that they put onto the neck. I love the fact that they, they did the whole thing. They didn't have to. They could have just did the front and called it done, but that's why I wanted to buy this one, because a lot of time was put into this. I mean, even the edges have it. But it does have a mod stamp at the top, and as we were talking earlier, DS0016. And generally, I don't like this style of Firebird, because they use the mini Grover tuners on them instead of the banjo style, and that causes them not to have perfectly straight string pull anymore. But being a Gibson USA product, okay, I understand they had to cut costs somewhere, but it really annoys me on like the Firebird Customs that they still get that style headstock on it. All said and done, this one weighs seven pounds, 12 and a half ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this beast sounds. So far, I've got to say, I like this a lot better than the 90s Firebirds, strictly because of the neck profile. It's much more comfortable in this area. Pretty much the way the 90s birds feel like is like exactly how the 12th fret area is. This is just a little bit more of a comfortable neck profile. However, I'm still going to stick to my guns that I really just don't like this style of headstock at all. The tuners are just all up on each other. It's kind of hard to tune all of them because they're so close together. But, you know, it is what it is. There's some pros and cons to this, but I'm really liking this pickup.
Wasn't that fun? This is just such a crazy firebird beast. When I bought it, I thought that really cool classical song was In the Hall of the Crimson King, but no, I mixed that with something else that I've never even heard before. Because I thought, you know, Screaming Face Guy kind of looked like this, but no, it's In the Hall of the Mountain King, in case you weren't familiar. But I thought that would be a great piece to play on this one for this spooky October themed guitar. So overall, once again, told you, love the neck profile on this, and I thought the tones were great. This is one of the more comfortable Firebirds out there. So if you just happen to want a Firebird 1 for some reason, you can find these occasionally for sale used, obviously not with this paint job. However, you're probably just gonna be better buying a custom shop if they're still selling for like 2,500 plus on the used market, because you can occasionally get some pretty good deal on custom shop Firebirds. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. If you wanna be the next owner of this one, I guess you could make me an offer, but I think I'll probably just hold on to this one for a little bit because it's kind of cool. I like it. It matches my collection. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.